Alrighty guys, good morning to you. We are live. We got a lot of glare coming up off of this phone. I invite you to come join me. It is 15 minutes after 10 a.m. on the 25th day of September. My goodness, September's flew by. Also, this is my brother's birthday. I had a birthday September 21st, and my brother Chris has a birthday today, September 25th. He will be 45 years old. <laughs> so, alrighty. Listen, it's been a few days since I was able to come on and, and do a devotion. i um, been very busy. So, I want to wrap up... Um, part two of what we were talking about a few days ago about the bronze basin um, or even the bronze laver but anyway so we're going to look at this um, the first part of it um, we spoke about Jesus it had been a picture of Jesus this this you go to the the door of the tabernacle and which is a representation of Jesus himself when Jesus teaches in John chapter 10 that he is the door and as you go in you, you got the brazen altar um, bronze altar of sacrifice where they make uh, sacrifice the atonement of their sins um, the priest would do that but then before he got to go into the holy place what they would do is they would go to the bronze basin or bronze laver and they would wash, which is a symbolization of um, bat being baptized. So anyway, we was talking about all of that, and I want to look at another picture of what this bronze laven is. Come on in. If you see any lumber. Sorry about that, but anyway, so we was looking about uh, the picture of not only the bronze laver being. Um, a symbolization of being baptized but was also looking at the bronze laver as part of being the word of god and we spoke on this um, a few days ago looking in exodus chapter 38 verse 8 and it says and he made the laver of brass and the foot of it of brass of the look of the looking glasses of the women assembling which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation what they had done was um, for the altar for the tabernacle everything everybody had offered um, an offering you know to help man it's awful dark isn't it sorry guys that it's so dark you can't hardly see maybe if I open up the blind a little bit oh my that made it worse but anyway, so let's see if that's better. That's a little bit better, isn't it? All right, can you see me now? So anyway, the women had donated their mirrors apart for part of this altar. Now the mirrors that they had donated wasn't mirrors of glass like we think of today, but it was highly polished metal. And the reason why I'm telling you all this was because um, this bronze laver or you know basin that they washed in, the priest would wash in, they would catch their reflection. And they said this was part of, um, uh, uh, symbolizes the Word of God. You see, when we look at the Word of God, you know, it should reflect our lives. It should reflect, give us a reflection of what we look like in the eyes of God. And the Word of God will chastise us. It will um, make us better. It will draw us closer. It will draw out the sin that we are in. You know, that's what the Word of God and His purpose is for. And we talked about all that in the last few days. And I, so I'm not going to rehash everything. Um, but it, all, we also spoke about being a hearer and doer of the Word of God. Um, I do recommend that you go back a few days ago 
and look at um, the first part of the brazen laver um, or bronze laver and um, you'll get the rest of the message on there. I'm not going to spend time talking about all of that this morning. Um, there's more things that we need to talk about. So not only is it a picture of the Word of God, but the, the bronze laver was also a picture of justification. Um, even a picture of sanctification. And look in Romans chapter 5, verse 10. It says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We are saved by blood and delivered from condemnation at the altar. So while the brazen or bronze altar is a picture of justification, it says the brazen laver is a picture of sanctification. The altar gave us justification. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his life's blood for us, then we were justified. We were made justified because of the gift that he gave us on Calvary. And then when we are baptized, you know, then this comes the sanctification. We are set apart. And sanctification is such a big word, but it just simply means set apart. You know, God sets us apart for his use. We cannot live like the world and, and participate in sinful things of the world and still want God to use us. It doesn't happen that way. Um, people think it does, and there's a lot of people, they'll go out. I've seen gospel groups that lives as worldly as they come. They've got a good sound. They sing really good. And, you know, people is drawn to that because, you know, they, they can sing, you know, they got a good sound, but the anointing isn't there. The Holy Spirit isn't there. And listen, I would much rather somebody yodel in the Holy Spirit than to hear somebody sing beautifully that don't have the Spirit of God. Um, listen, it's all about the Spirit of God. It's not about us. It's not about how talented we are. You know, we are wanting God to use us, then we need to be set apart. And the Word of God will set us apart from the world and the sinful things of the world. So, let's go on. It says, the Word of God cleanses. It justifies. It sanctifies. It, it cleanses us. Just as Aaron and his sons, they wash their hands and their feet in water from the brazen laver. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 30, verse 19. It says, So too the word of God cleanses us. Ephesians 5, 26 tells us that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. It's the word of God. You know, I'm not teaching you. Baptism is necessary. But baptism alone will not save a person. I hear a lot of times people say, oh, you know what, they're good people, but they're not baptized. But well, listen, you know, it's baptism doesn't save us. I know there are people that says it does, but the scriptures, when I read, it, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's us repenting of our sins. That's what saves us. Now, John 3 tells us that, you know, those that, are, that is born of spirit is spirit. That is born of flesh is flesh. Marvel not what I say unto you. You must be born again. And, you know, so the picture of being born again is repenting of our sins and being baptized. I don't dispute that. But there are times and circumstances um, sometimes in life that we're not able to be baptized. Look at the thief that was on the cross when he called out for Jesus you know, to remember him when he goes into his kingdom. And Jesus responded by saying, oh, well, we better get you off the cross and baptize you first. Well, no, that's not why he responded. That wasn't his response. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You know, I do believe that baptism is necessary, but baptism alone does not save anybody. You, know, you go in dry and you come out wet, but it's when you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that's where salvation comes from. Um, you're being baptized is, is a outward work of what happened to you inwardly. It's a spiritual, um, well, you know, it's a spiritual work, if you will, because you're, you die out to sin when you're saved. 
And what do you do when something's dead? You bury it. And so that's what baptism does. You you repent of your sins. You die out the sin. They bury you in a watery grave, and then you come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. And you know that's what this brazen laver, you know, represented, but it also represented being cleansed by the Word of God. And it says in Ephesians five twenty six that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. So as the priest came into the tabernacle, their feet would be would have been dusty. Their hands would be um, bloody because of the work that they did on the altar of sacrifice. And so they'd need a cleansing. So that was the purpose of the bronze or the brazen laver or basin, however you want to word it. I mean, it had two basins, one for the hands and one for the feet. You know, the hands was a picture of serving God, and the feet is a picture of us walking with God. Both needs to be cleaned. If we're going to use our hands to serve God, then we must be cleansed. And, you know, if we're going to use our feet to travel for God, it must be cleansed. It must be set apart, set apart um, holy, sanctified holy for God's use, you know, and I can't stress that enough. You know, sanctification is the will of God. Being set apart cannot dabble in sin and still expect to do God's bidding. And that's where we're at today in society. We want to live as evil and worldly as we can, we can, but yet still feel like we're set apart. You know, I've watched the TV show. I've watched Tyler Perry's plays, and you know, and I'm appalled because you know. It started out as comedy, and then they cuss and everything, and then they sing a pretty song, and then they start speaking in tongues as if the Holy Spirit is filled in them. Listen, God does, and that makes me mad, but God does not dwell in unclean vessels. Folks, listen, you're not going to get up on stage and cuss and carry on and, and then sing a song and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's blasphemy. So don't give me that garbage. Don't get out in the world and live, you know, as worldly as you can and then go to church and automatically you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, that's insulting God. That's insulting the Holy Spirit, you know, and that's dangerous ground. But God expects you and me to be set apart for his use. You can say ouch or amen. You can shut me off, whatever. But truth will always be truth. So I wrote this down as a note. It says, daily we need to be washed by the water of the Word of God. Even though we are saved and we go about life in this sinful world, sometimes we pick up dust and dirt along the way. And God's Word will keep us clean. So I want you to understand that. You know, it's very important that the Word of God is applied to our life daily. In order to fellowship with the Lord and come into His presence, we need to be separated and cleansed from sin. This labor shows that while sin has been dealt with once and for all on the cross, we need to come daily confessing our sins and mistakes and that we may be cleansed from any defilement of the world. And lastly, it says the word of God brings us into maturity. The labor speaks to us of going on to maturity um, by Christ and in Christ. It says at the altar we have been born again, but the labor we grow as we look into the mirror of the word of God. Remember the priest regularly um, came to the labor to wash. Look in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So listen, we who are saved, we become a royal priesthood. Because listen, Back in the Old Testament, when they went through the door, they came to the altar of sacrifice, they made sacrifice for their sins. After that sacrifice was over, they can go on their way. The Israelites could go on their own, go back and live life. They didn't have to wash in the basin, but the priest did. 
But Christ, you know, Peter had told us in 1 Peter chapter 2 that when we're saved, we become a royal priesthood. In other words, we're almost just like what the priest was in the Old Testament. We must be washed in the blood. Then we must be washed in that basin. We must be set apart and must be cleaned. So we who are saved are a royal, royal priesthood. And we too must come regularly to the Word of God to be convicted, cleansed, and sanctified. But for some reason, oh, we don't have to read the Bible every day. You don't have to go to church every day. You don't have to have fellowship with God every day. And then they boo-hoo and bellyache because their blessings from God is minimal. Well, well what, why, why do you think it's minimal? Why do you think you don't hear from God? Because you don't spend time reading His Word, hearing His Word, doing His Word, worshiping with brothers and sisters in Christ. We alienate ourselves from the presence of God, but yet we bellyache when God doesn't come to His temple and minister to us. Let's close up. It says, The Word of God is necessary to maintain our Christian life. The brazen labor could not be avoided in the tabernacle on the way to the holy place. Any time that the priest would go to the holy place, from the door to the holy place, always, the door represented Jesus, the altar represented the sacrifice Jesus made, the basin represented being washed, not only in the blood, but being washed in the word and the water to cleanse us, and then you was fit to go into the holy place. But had any priest bypass the altar of sacrifice or bypass the brazen laver where they washed. If any priest would bypass one or the other and went into the holy place, he would fall down dead. He wouldn't be able to enter into that holy place. Children, let me tell you something. If we bypass the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, if we bypass the word of God, we're not going to enter into the holy place. Regardless of what people says. Oh, I believe in God. Well, the devil believes and trembles as well. It's more than just saying, I believe in God. It's accepting Christ as your Savior and then living your life to um, please them. So the brazen labor could not be avoided in the tabernacle on the way to the holy place. The priests were required to stop there and take the time to cleanse and sanctify themselves or they could not enter into the holy place of God. So too must we we take the time to cleanse and sanctify ourselves using the word of God. And I'll look in John chapter 1 verse 1 and John chapter 1 verse 14. Um, and it tells us when we're looking at this brazen um, labor that it is the word of God that we re see the reflection of Jesus Christ through the word of God. And we know this because in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh. Um, and the Word is Jesus Christ. Notice when they talked about the Word, they capitalized that Word. That W was capital capitalized. It wasn't a lowercase, but when they said the Word, it was a proper name. And the word is another name for Jesus Christ. So listen, um, I don't know if you get much out of this or not, but I absolutely love studying this stuff. Um, the opening of the tabernacle represented Jesus Christ. There's white linen all the way around, and we'll talk about that later on. But there's white linen all the way around the tabernacle. But in the door of the tabernacle, there was purple and there was scarlet or red linen. And that re represented the blood of Jesus, and it represented the royalty, the majesty of Jesus Christ. And folks, listen, if we're ever going to get into the holy place where God dwells, we must go through Jesus Christ. Then there's that brazen altar of sacrifice where the atonement was made. And what's different between the atonement back then and what Jesus did on the cross in the New Testament and I've said this many a times, but imagine you owed ten, a bill for $10,000. You owed $10,000 a month, but you're only able to make a payment of $1,000. Well, they will accept that payment, but you're still $9,000 in the hole, and every month 
that debt gets higher and higher. And this is what the atonement was. When they made sacrifices with animals, it was just sending a payment for your sin debt. It wasn't paying your sin debt off. It was just paying, making a payment. But when Jesus Christ, being the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, He didn't make a payment for your sin. He paid your sin debt in full. See, that's the difference between the Old Testament sacrifice and the New Testament sacrifice. Jesus paid our debt in full by His blood. And all we have to do is just accept His gift of salvation. And the Bible teaches us that we'll be saved. So, listen, that's all I'm going to talk about, about the altar and the brazen laven or the basin. So, um, Lord willing, next time I get a chance to come on live, then we're going to talk about some of the um, furniture, if you will, of the tabernacle and the table and the lamppost and, and shoe bread and all that stuff. There's wonderful lessons to be learned with that as well. So I'm going to jump off here, Lord willing. We'll try to be back on tomorrow and we'll continue to study of this wonderful um, topic of the tabernacle of the Old Testament. Um, a tabernacle where, where God dwelled with his people in the wilderness. And folks, God will dwell in us if we keep his statutes and his commandments and do what he tells us to do. So listen, that's all I got for you. Lord willing, we'll be back on tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. God bless you guys. Love you.